So let's look more closely at these particles that are inside the atom. They're called subatomic particles because they're smaller than an atom. So there's protons and neutrons, and these have very similar masses. Here in the table, if we look at their masses in kilograms, a proton is 1.67262 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and a neutron is also times 10 to the minus 27. See where the difference in these masses lies? In the fourth significant figure. So they are very close in mass. In atomic mass units, um, and here's the definition of atomic mass unit, an atomic mass unit is one-twelfth the mass of a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons. Basically, we need a unit that is similar in size to the things that we're measuring the mass of. Obviously, grams and kilograms are not working. And even, even like picograms is still way too big. So they created a unit to use with atomic, subatomic particles. And they called it atomic mass unit. Very creative, isn't it? The abbreviation is AMU, and we say AMU, not MU. So in AMUs, a proton is 1.0073, and a neutron is 1.0087. Very close. Relative to them, the electron is really, really tiny. 0 0.00055 atomic mass units. So it's um, the proton and the neutron are about 1,800 times larger in mass than the electron. So a lot of the times, we basically just say, well, the, the electron is so small that we don't even need to consider its mass. It's just so small. It's like if you have a big truck, right, and you throw a couple of empty cardboard boxes into it, and you're, th you know, what's the mass of the truck now? Well, the truck scale probably can't tell you the difference because it's so small. And so you say it's negligible. It doesn't matter if we throw a couple of empty boxes in here. So that's the way the electrons are. Their mass is, is so small. They do have mass, but the mass is so small that it really doesn't matter. That reminds me of a T-shirt my husband had for a while. It said, electrons have mass? I didn't even know they were Catholic. <laughs> Chemists have strange senses of humor. So the masses, and you should know that a proton and a neutron are, are very similar in mass, and that the electron is so small that we can say it's negligible, almost zero. Then the charges, we need to know the charges. Protons are plus one, neutrons are neutral at zero, and electrons are negative one. And these charges do not have a unit. We do know the magnitude of the charge in coulombs, if you care, um, but we're not going to do calculations or anything with that. So we say the, the proton is plus one, the electron is minus one. They're equal but opposite in charge. And the neutrons are just along for the ride and they don't affect the charge at all. The reason this definition for atomic mass unit is so weird is because they wanted it to come out that um, the protons and the neutrons were going to be approximately one atomic mass unit. And the carbon-12 atom, which is the one that has six protons and six neutrons, is a very stable element, and it's, it's easy to obtain, and so that they could you know, reproduce this. Oh, I jumped the gun again. If the proton is nearly 2,000 times as massive as an electron, I already told you that. But this is interesting. If a proton had the mass of a baseball, an electron would have the mass of a rice grain. So that kind of gives you baseball versus one grain of rice. Really tiny. So solid matter, because we talk about solid matter, but is matter really solid? Why did most of the particles go straight through? And then why did some bounce back? Well, let's look at this. This is um, an illustration of like a children's jungle gym that you might see. And if you, this is backed up and you look at it, and it, it does look almost solid, doesn't it? You can see little holes here and there 
but overall it looks pretty solid. But when you zoom in, you see that there are big holes in this. Okay? And this is how matter is. If you take, um, I don't know, let's see. If you took like a, a volleyball net, could you throw or shoot airsoft pellets through a volleyball net? Yeah, easy. You'd have a hard time getting one to hit a string and actually bounce back at you, right? Well, if you took, say, 500 volleyball nets and put them back to back, they're probably not going to line up just perfect, are they? The combination of all those strings being slightly in different places is probably going to create something that's pretty solid. And so that's how matter, while it is mostly empty space, can feel and appear to be pretty solid. So summary of the nature of electrical charge, and again this is a little bit of physics. So electrical charge. We're talking about electrical charge but we're not real familiar with electrical charge. We're a lot more familiar with magnetic fields. Okay, so magnets you have experience with, right? You put, like, the Brio trains. You put them together one way and they'll stick together. You turn one of the cars around and you can't get them to stick together. If you push them together, they push each other apart. You can mess with magnets on your refrigerator and it, it wants to stick, doesn't it? But then if you get two magnets to each other, if you align them one way, they want to stick together, and another way, they push each other apart. It's the same idea as what electrical charge does. So positive charge and negative charge, opposites, attract each other. But like charges repel each other. They're going to push away just like magnets do. And when we add these, if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, we say that those charges cancel. Those two things are going to stick together and overall there's no charge because you have a plus and a minus. Same number and they add to zero. We say that's charge neutral. Any questions about that? <coughs>